Welcome back to Explained by Michael. Today we're going to look at what the heck the hypergeometric distribution actually is. There seems to be confusion about when to use a hypergeometric distribution. So first we'll look at a grid that answers when to use it and compares it to some other distributions. Second, we'll look at the word hypergeometric and understand its name and its origin. And as usual, no formulas. Let's go! We're reaching into an urn where there's a certain number of each style of object, and we can either replace them after each draw or keep them permanently out of the urn. And we could be either given the number of draws we'd like to take or the number of results. So I challenge you to pause and at least consider this first column here. See if you can come up with the distributions that answer each of these questions. The first one is our familiar binomial distribution. When there are independent draws and we're given the number of draws, the binomial tells us how many results we can expect. On the other hand, if we're given the number of results we want and need to know how many draws, that is the negative binomial. If this is unfamiliar to you, check out my video on this topic exclusively. Now for the good part. Since this is a video about hypergeometric, you might be able to fill in the blank already. The difference between binomial and a hypergeometric is that in a hypergeometric, we don't replace the objects back into the urn. This makes it a little bit more complicated of a formula, and that's why we learn binomial before we even talk about hypergeometric. The equivalent of the negative binomial, when we don't replace our objects, is just the negative hypergeometric. This is really all there is to it. The key is to understand that it's similar in nature to binomial, but we use it when we don't replace the objects back in the urn. In other words, we keep them out as if it was a drawing of names. Another similarity is that the binomial, where bi means two, can actually be a multinomial when there's three or more objects in the urn. Similarly, we can have a multivariate hypergeometric or a multivariate negative hypergeometric distribution. We can understand this because bi means two and multi, of course, means multiple. So seeing its similarity to binomial, why wouldn't we call it the hyper binomial or another spin-off of binomial just as we would with the negative binomial? Let's look at the word hypergeometric itself and understand why it's named such. Long story short is that the hypergeometric distribution is named after a hypergeometric data generating process. What the heck does that mean? Let's look at it. A typical geometric progression does not include this coefficient. It's just the summation of x to the n. And a geometric sequence in, is one in which sequential values are of a fixed ratio. And this is why the geometric series, even though it's very similar to the negative binomial, is called a geometric series is because the ratio is a constant number. Now in the case of the hypergeometric, the ratio is not a constant number, but instead a constant function of n. The word hyper means more or beyond, just like when you hyperextend your elbow, it moves beyond where it's supposed to move. Well, a hypergeometric series is beyond just a normal geometric series because it has this coefficient. And it turns out algebraically, this coefficient makes it so that the ratio of sequential numbers is not a constant number, but a constant function. So the distribution hypergeometric really doesn't have anything to do with the geometric distribution. Really, it's like a hyperbinomial or really a different case where instead of replacing them, we just keep them out of the pool. So hypergeometric comes from this property, not anything to do with the geometric distribution. So that's really it. We covered when to use the hypergeometric distribution and what its name means and where it comes from and why we use it. Thanks for watching. We'll have another video on the formula of the hypergeometric distribution itself because that's wonky and requires a video in and of itself. Thank you.